Good afternoon, grade 11. So today, I'm going to be guiding you into the process of writing your position paper. Uh, this is also detailed on page 2 to 3 of your book, but so that I could guide you better, I'm just going to give you some advice with regards to uh, writing it. Uh, first, let's introduce the idea of what a position paper is. So we have many definitions, but your book provides something that is really useful. Uh, what it demands is that you create a paper that makes a diagnosis wherein you describe the nature and causes of a given issue and then a prognosis of that specific issue, which means that you have to describe what can be done to address that given problem that you have identified. So we have many uh, types of issues that we could choose. Um, and uh, I really suggest that you... Uh, consider these two specific factors when choosing an issue. So I suggest that it be contemporary, ibig sabihin, nangyayari sa present, and at the same time, something that you are interested in. So these are just some examples of issues that you can write about. But again, you could always expand your scope to include other issues, uh, as long as, again, it's contemporary and it's something that would interest you. So there's no limitations with regards to geography. Pwede kayong pumunta or lumabas ng Pilipinas. Again, as long as contemporary siya at saka uh, interesado kayo. But these are just some examples. So you could always write about the government budget for 2021, anti-terror law, vaccination. You could even write about show business such as Julia Barreto and Gerald Anderson issue. But with regards to this, again, these issues should be considered right, as something that is a bit problematic. Right? You have to uh, give the diagnosis, what makes this an issue that is urgent as well as necessary to be addressed, and then the prognosis. What are you going to do or what uh, should people do to address that specific issues? So, for example, Julia Barreto and Gerald Anderson issue, you cannot just... Um, Think about that issue in a limited scope. So you have to factor in the reactions of people uh, and then something that would make it problematic, di ba? And uh, give a diagnosis kung bakit problematic yung issue na iyon and then ibibigay yung uh, prognosis. Okay, paano masolusyonan? So you might pinpoint, for example, the reaction sa social media and uh, what makes the reaction problematic and uh, what could be done so that it doesn't uh, become problematic in the future, right? And so uh, with regards to the content or the amount of um, paragraphs in that specific essay, you could limit yourself to four to six paragraphs, but you could always go beyond that. What I require is one introductory paragraph. Uh, you have one to two paragraphs that details uh, your diagnosis, which is like an elaboration of your introductory paragraph. And then one to two that details your prognosis. And then you have one concluding paragraph to summarize everything that you have expressed in uh, the previous paragraphs. So again, it's, it's, uh, it, you could go beyond uh, the specific paragraph numbers, uh, but ito yung pinaka minimum. Yan. So, um, depende, di ba kung gano ka elaborate, and then kung gaano ka deep yung pagdelve nyo sa issue. Kasi again, you can always go deeper with regards to that. But uh, this is, uh, what I, I suggest is that you also try to limit yourself because position papers that are more brief, but then are more concise, right? And expresses the key roots of the issue as well as um, expresses well the, the uh, prognosis or the solutions are generally better compared to if you have a really long paper. Okay, pero ayan. So, depende lang naman sa inyo. Uh, with regards to the sources, you can always start with scanning your social media, such as Twitter, Twitter and Facebook. But again, you have to make sure that it's just a scanning phase. So, dun pwede kayo mag-start, but then it shouldn't be the end of your research process. You have to go through the new sites that are, uh, that, uh, that are credible. Right? So, kailangan nating mag-select kung ano mga new sites yung credible na ito. And these are just some suggestions of new sites that are credible. Uh, you have Rappler, you have Inquirer. So when we're talking about credibility, syempre, yung inexpect natin dyan is that they do their research well, they cite credible sources as well, and at the same time, if there are any errors, they remedy those errors. So these two newspapers have those kinds of mechanisms. 
Kasi, again, iba yung kanilang uh, difference nila sa social media. For example, is that walang checking yung social media. The sources that are cited are not credible in the first place. And then, wala silang masyadong stake with regards to reputation nila. So, kahit sino lang pwedeng mag-post. While, if you are a new site, your reputation is at stake, diba? given that this is your job, basically, or the job of the new sites. So, these are just some. And for Rappler, I really suggest if you want to go into an issue in depth, you go to the news break section and then go to the explainers because it's a comprehensive outlining as well as elaboration of a specific issue, uh, usually contemporary issues. Though. And then you also could go and then find out opinions uh, from the Inquirer opinion side. Uh, usually, you have really uh, credible opinion writers uh, respected in their field, and uh, they would usually target contemporary issues um, para magbigay di ba, ng perspektibo nila. So you could go and start with that if you want. And you could also consult government websites, kahit anong government websites. So you could start, for example, if you're interested in human rights, you could go Commission on Human Rights. You could also consult university websites. So for example, UP has a list of position papers in the UP SITS, a Center for uh, Development Studies. And you could also go to Ateneo and Lasal. Just search Lasal position paper or Ateneo uh, position paper, any sort of university that you think might be uh, relevant. So, for example, kapag outside na sources, you could uh, use diba, yung ibang universities uh, from UK, from US, and so on. Meron yun silang mga position papers or publications with regards to the issues. Contemporary issues, specifically. Yeah, so uh, that's the next part. And this is an example uh, that was given also in your CLE, but I'm just going to detail it. So the example of the position paper I gave was uh, created by the Ibon organization, which is an economic organization that releases publications as well as position papers regarding key issues. Yeah, so uh, with regards to the title, diba makikita natin this is a clear and a uh, concise title that already expresses what you need to know about what the position paper is. So, diba, basically, it's a prognosis. Ensure sufficient, safe, and accessible water during COVID-19 crisis. So, it's limited and then specific, right? And you could see that at sa pink, diba, you have the title that is uh, in yellow. Make sure that your title is also like this. So, alam ko kaagad kung ano yung magiging laman ng position paper ninyo. And eto yung pink, the pink one, this is the introductory paragraph. So again, you only need to do one introductory paragraph. You can give the context. Uh, you give the context of why this issue is relevant and why, why we need to be concerned about this issue uh, as what they did here. So sinabi nila, maraming COVID-19 cases. Uh, that is the context, the ba? The COVID-19 crisis. And then you could see here that uh, the World Health Organization, for example, specified that water or as access to safe and potable water is one of the key conditions so that people could actually survive the crisis. Okay, okay so ito yung, ano, yung broader context sa labas. The diagnosis will try to uh, ask the specific context. So ano yung context so sa Pilipinas? Diba? Ganun din. So from the introductory paragraph, which is broad, Narrow it down. Try to narrow it down. Try to get more specific. So, um, hindi makikita yung, uh, yung report na ito, pero you can go to the website from Ibon or you can go to the link I sent you to the CLE and then think where the diagnosis part is. And then you could also have the prognosis. So, makikita nyo sa pinaka-last part, what are the specific steps? that the government or NGOs or kung sino man organization which should be responsible for addressing this key issue has to do. So it should be specific. If you look at the Ibon organization, they have outlines of the specific uh, duties of the different organizations that need to address these key issues as well as the um, conditions diba, na kinakailangan maabot para ma-address yung issue na ito. And then you have the concluding paragraph at the very last part, which summarizes everything from the start to the uh, to the prognosis. Basically, it's just a replay or a reiteration of the things that you said 
in your introductory paragraph papunta sa prognosis. Make, uh, just made shorter. Diba? Ayan. Um, okay. So, the last one. How will you be graded? With regards to this, hopefully the skills are developed while you are writing this paper. Yung ating target is critical thinking, communication, specifically written communication, uh, cultural literacy, or civic and information literacy with regards to how you selected your sources, social and cultural awareness as well with regards to the topic that you actually chose and how well you know these specific topics. But these are the specific criteria. This is actually from 43 or page 43 to 44 of your book. So you have the thesis statement and evidence. For the exceeding, uh, it means that you have met and gone beyond the standards already. Position is clearly defined and clearly stated. So specific yung position, ko ano yung stand mo. Two to three main points. Our main arguments are provided to support position and are supported by evidence. Counter-arguments are identified and addressed. For those of you who do not know counter-arguments, these are uh, the mga reservations, diba? or mga sinasabi nila to fight against the arguments that you have outlined. Okay, so, uh, yun, yung exceeding. With regards to the beginning, just, uh, just read through the standards. Make sure that when you are trying to write your paper, you're also actively thinking or actively evaluating if your paper is meeting the specific standards set here. So the beginning, if yung position natin vague or hindi masyadong clear when we're reading it to ourselves or to others, if there are reasons but these reasons are not supported by facts, or medyo general reasoning natin pero walang ebidensya, we haven't cited any credible sources, and general statements are provided but not specific ones, then you will be graded one sa beginning na aspect. And then with regards to uh, pakibasa lang yung approaching and meeting, with regards to content and analysis, if you lack valid and accurate information, if little to no relevance of information is used to support the position, if conclusion is unclear, hindi ko alam kung paano or hindi natin alam kung paano nakoconnect yung conclusion tsaka uh, yung sinabi mo sa iyong diagnosis and prognosis, uh, there is no clear explanation of, of position or if conclusion is missing, then you will be graded in terms of beginning. With regards to the exceeding standards, strong or deep analysis of the issues and uses a variety of information that is credible, Position is developed from analysis to the conclusion. So merong logical na flow diba? from your diagnosis to your prognosis to the conclusions. And political processes and ideological biases are stated and acknowledged specifically with regards to your reasoning or your arguments. And so in add ko lang yung yellow na part na iyan because this is something that we have discussed in class. So I want to see some of the concepts that were discussed be integrated in your specific content. Uh, specifically, ideological biases as well as political processes. Okay, and the last one, you have organization and structure. Exceeding standards if paper is coherently organized, writing is clear, concise and persuasive, and arguments are easy to follow. So, basahin nyo pa ulit-ulit, titingnan kapag uh, organized yung paper na ito. And then, grammar and spelling, please recheck your paper again and again if there are grammar or spelling errors or even mechanical errors with regards to your formatting and so on. And so, um, anyways, this is the first paper. What we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate your paper in class. Titing na natin. Kasi this is actually a very hard rubric to determine by yourself. So we're gonna have peer evaluation as well as evaluation from me to determine how you could improve in your uh, next position papers. Don't worry, this is the initial stage. Ito yung pinakauna natin na position paper. And what we're trying to do is you just uh, create one and then we'll modify it. Or it's not your paper itself, but the skills that you need or your um, evaluating skills with regards to the papers that you will make in the future. And so um, if you have any questions regarding your output, just message me. And it's fine to also give drafts of the output before you pass it to the CLE so that I could recheck it if uh, you want that kind of mechanism. Uh, yun lang.